one. From then to now, part twenty nine. It was a beautiful day and not too hot. We rode for about four hours and then stopped along the beach to rest. We found a Mexican family who lived by the ocean, and they let us have some water for the horses. We paid them for some fruit they were selling, and sat for a while in the sand and rested. It's been a great week with the children, Miss Rosa. I never could have imagined the real beauty and sincerity that children have. What I have learned so far surpasses what I have come to know in my life up to now. I said to her, "You have a good heart, Goldie." And so you fit in real well with them. I want my own children some day. Also, an honest man I can love. You were meant to teach. That is why the children love you," she said. I think it comes from my parents. They are like children, very wise children. I said, "I knew that it also came from the guides, but I didn't want to interfere with how Rosa saw things, so I didn't mention them." We were soon on our way again. We rode along the shoreline because it was fun to be so close to the water. I could tell that Rosa liked the water too. She is a good and honest person, I thought, and I'm so glad I know her. It was after dark when we finally reached Paul and Mary's house. They were outside, sitting in the hammocks and enjoying themselves. When we rode up, they were not that surprised to see us. They both laughed as we rode in. We knew you were coming. Did you walk most of the way? Said Mary as she giggled. As she was laughing, my horse turned and looked at me as if to say, "I did all the walking." What did you do, Indian boy? I began to laugh and then dismounted and gave Mary a hug, and so did Rosa. We were just enjoying the view of the ocean, and so we took our time. I said as I greeted them, "Come inside, you two. I have supper ready." You are hungry, aren't you? Asked Mary. Of course we are, Mama. We haven't eaten all day, said Rosa. How is Sonia, Mary? I asked. Go see for yourself, Mister Teacher, she said. I walked into the bedroom and saw her sitting up. Sonia was a very lovely Mexican girl with brown and light-coloured hair mixed. She was a strong girl, not petite like some. She had a lovely smile and voice to match. She had her own wonderful aura about her. Hello, Goldie. Come in and sit with me. She said very softly. I sat in a chair next to her bed. You are looking much better, Miss Sonia. You look very well. I said. I do feel better, Goldie, but I am still weak from what I had. She said. 
I just looked at her for a moment. Her being was beautiful, and I knew her heart was wonderful. Then she said, I saw you on the inner Goldie. You and I walked along your favourite beach, and we talked about the future, she said. I hesitated for a moment, and was wondering what to reply. So I said, Yes, I remember seeing you there. You know my friend Shis, don't you? I asked. Shis and I have known each other for years, and we have talked a lot about you, she said. After hearing this, now I really didn't know what to say. Goldie, come and eat your supper, said Paul from the other room, saved by life itself, I thought. I will be back soon, and try and figure out something to say to you, Sonia, I said as I got up and walked out. I could see her smiling as I left the room, and then start to giggle. I sat down with everyone, and began to eat. Slow down, Goldie, you have plenty of time, said Mary, as I was rather stuffing myself. I was a little nervous about what was taking place with Sonia, and what she said. I'm so hungry, I could eat someone else's horse. Is Sonia okay yet, Mary? I asked. She is fine, she just needs a little more rest. Her mama knows what's best for her. Then she laughed, and so did all of us. I heard her talking in her sleep a few times, Goldie. She mentioned your name, and someone else's, that I can't remember, said Mary as she was looking at me for an answer. That is funny, huh? Sounds rather strange, like what the two of you must do at night, I said, and then kept eating. She also had a good laugh with that one. After supper, all of us talked for a while, as Mary and Rosa cleaned up. How do you like being the teacher, Goldie? asked Paul. It is the best decision I ever made with my life here, I said. The children that Sonia have taught are very special and wonderful. I could never really say enough about them. All the thanks goes to Rosa, and all her help in getting me the position, I said. Then Paul leaned over to me, and said very softly, We saw you on the inner, teaching. Reba's Artars and your friend Shis took us to see you while you were with the class, he said, as he straightened up again as Rosa came and sat beside him. Telling one of your funny little stories again, are you, Papa? She said, as she hugged and kissed him, and then poked him a bit in his side to make him laugh, which he did immediately. Then Mary came over and sat with us. Thank you, Mary. That was another great meal as usual. I am so glad to see the two of you again. I had the best time teaching and learning with the children, I said. You are officially the teacher now, Goldie. We are proud of you. You are a great contribution to our family, she said as she winked at me. I got the first part of what she said, 
but I wasn't sure what she meant about the second part, so I just said something. Please excuse me. I want to go and see how Sonia is doing, I said as I got up and went to the open door of the bedroom. Come and sit with me, Goldie. I want to talk to you, she said as I sat in the chair. It's a nice night, isn't it? I said with a bit of laughter. You are funny, Goldie. I already know you are a little shy about certain things. Shis has told me a lot, she said with a big smile on her face, looking right at me. I had a feeling that I was about to enter a brand new area in my life that I had never known this time around. I know what you are going to be doing this lifetime, and I want to be with you, because I can help you with so many things. Shis and I have discussed what is to come in your life, and you will need a loving assistant, because there will be times when you will be all alone. She and Rebazartars know that you have a great treasure of wonders to share, but you also need someone to give you objective views about yourself and what you will be going through, she said. This is all a surprise to me, Sonia. Now I know what the experience meant with you and Shis. I love her so much, but she no longer exists here, so I do feel alone at times until I go there to see her. This is a funny situation that I am now in. What you are saying sounds very good, but what does she consider about someone else while I am here? I asked, wondering how all this would come out. She wants you to be happy while you are here. She knows you have another lifetime here, and you will have several other women in the future who you will be with. She is very real with everything. Because in the real universes, all of this physical stuff does not matter. You already know the levels that relate to the true reality are not in the same sense as what all of us consider to be life on Earth. The true home of our being that exists on the seventh level is of a total knowingness that the mind cannot comprehend. Shis has her beingness on that level, and to her what happens on the earth does not matter. She very well knows the difference, because she was once here as your wife many centuries ago. You and I will have a good life together, and learn so much more, and be able to give so much more. I love to teach like you do, Goldie, and I can teach what you will be teaching. We can have a wonderful life together, and be in the same adventure, she said. I looked over everything she said, and I liked what I was hearing. I just found it hard to believe that here was something I really never considered, but now that I knew, I could see that it seemed to be a part of what life had set up for me. She smiled and then put her hand out for me to take hold of. 
I leaned over and took her hand. She was looking straight at me, with the most honest sincerity. I decided not to question anything, because I had done so in the past so many times. This time I would go with what was presented to me, and live the adventure. I think she knew what I was thinking, because she leaned over and kissed me on the lips. I was sold. This was all happening so fast. But I didn't want to have things any different than what they were, so I totally agreed within myself. You are a beautiful person, Sonia, and I know this is all so sudden, and I can see myself loving you for the rest of my life. Thank you for coming into my life, I said, as I was really making an effort to get myself totally involved in this new part of my life. I used to think I was sincere about my life, but after experiencing the children, and now Sonia, I felt that I had a lot of catching up to do. I wanted to learn and be more sincere with everything in my life, and I knew this was the opportunity to do so. I felt myself move right into the new change. I felt like a child at Christmas, receiving a great gift. I openly went right into an agreement with what I was experiencing, and loved it. My heart felt a new joy and enthusiasm with Sonia. Let's meet on the inner tonight, and talk some more. We can go anywhere, and you will be fine there, I said. I kissed her, and as I was walking out, I could feel the difference in my life. There was suddenly a shift into a new reality that was now so obvious. I didn't want to go back to what I had been. I wanted to proceed with what was happening now. I decided to go outside and be in the cool air for a while. I went and sat in the hammock and looked up at the stars. As I lay there, I thought about how free the stars are, and that there must be the same freedom for each one of us, after we have gone through the lengthy process to become aware of what life is. It was such a silent night. There were no sounds at all, and then I soon fell asleep. I found myself on the other side, in the tree house, where Shis and I had been together. As I lay there, a soft breeze came in through the opening to the entryway. Then suddenly... Sonia came walking in, and sat next to me on the bed, and put her arm around me and kissed my cheek. Hello, Goldie. Have you been waiting long? she said, as she began to laugh. I laughed with her, and we held each other for the longest time. Then she said, How long do you want to teach the class? I looked within myself, and realised that I didn't have an answer for her. I don't know. I usually know when it is time to move on, but right now I don't feel the need to. But it is your class and job. I am only filling in for you, I said. Well... What if we both taught the class as husband and wife? 
she said, giggling while she was looking straight at me. I hesitated for a moment, and then I actually heard a voice say, Do it. It seemed to be a woman's voice. You know what? That would be a great idea, I said, and then kissed her like it's done on the earth. She immediately laughed and said, I am so happy, Goldie. I will always love you, just like everyone else does. We laughed and laughed. All of this is very humorous to me. I never decided to have a relationship in my life like this, but here I am, with more than I can handle, I said as we hugged and giggled. You have the gift of great abundance, and it is showing up for you, she said. I am amazed at all the sudden change in my life from just deciding to quit the army. I am in a brand new affair of loving and living, and this is great. We will have the best of times, teaching and loving each other, Sonia, I said as I held her. Yes, we will, Goldie. I saw the children with you, and they love you because you have opened them up to new worlds of freedom beyond what they could have ever imagined. We have lots of new friends who will be sharing their real experiences. We will be doing so much wonderful sharing together, she said. As I was with her, I suddenly felt something. It was the cat on my stomach, and then I woke up. I was so startled when I came back into my body that I flipped the hammock and landed on the ground, right on my rear. The cat jumped off as I began to twirl around. That was close. You are touchy in the morning, he said as he sat and looked at me on the ground. I don't need help waking up, I said, as I was holding my back. I think you were just having too much fun, he said. Actually, I was, kitty boy, I replied as I got to my feet.